Hello everyone and welcome to Histories of Airliners and our VC-10 Museum Exhibit video. Today we'll delve into the fascinating story of these iconic British jets, explore some of the incredible VC-10s preserved around the world. The Vickers VC-10, a four-engine jetliner, first soared in 1962, renowned for its power, grace, and exceptional range. The VC-10 dominated long-haul routes for airlines like the British Overseas Airways Corporation and East African Airways, amongst others. The Vickers VC-10 was designed and built to fill in a niche left unfulfilled by earlier jet airliners, the ability to fly into and out of high altitude and high temperature airports with a full load. The VC-10 came in two main variants, the standard VC-10 for short and medium haul and the Super VC-10 with a longer fuselage for extended ranges. Production ended in 1970 due to competition from wide-body jets and the better economics of its contemporaries, but the VC-10's legacy lives on. This aviation museum houses one whole complete VC-10 and one partial example. First, we'll look at the history of the complete VC-10. This aircraft's first flight was in October of 1964 and then delivered at the end of that month to British United Airways. Six years later, by order of the United Kingdom's government, British United and Caledonia merged to form British Caledonian, with the aircraft going through a hybrid livery during the transition. By 1974, the aircraft had been acquired by the Oman government for use as a VIP transport. The aircraft's final flight with the Omani government was in 1987, and the aircraft was donated to the Brooklyn's Museum for a permanent outdoor display. The second partial hull of a VC-10 at Brooklyn's was delivered to the flag-carrying airliner British Overseas Airways Corporation, or BOAC for short, in the summer of 1964. It stayed with BOAC through the merger with British European Airways in 1974 that formed British Airways, and continued to fly with them with the 1970s-era red-tailed Nagus livery. The aircraft was donated to the RAF Midlands Museum in Cosford in 1979, where it was on outdoor display until 2006, when it had to be moved for an upcoming expansion to the museum. When the aircraft was inspected at this time, it was found to have too much corrosion to move altogether, so the front part of the fuselage was saved and moved down to the Brooklands Museum, while the rest of the aircraft was broken up for recycling. The next stop on our journey brings us to the Imperial War Museum in Duxford, England. Like the previous aircraft, this airliner started service with BOAC in 1965. This aircraft served BOAC exclusively until April of 1966 when it was used in joint operations between BOAC and Cunard Eagle Airways to make up shortfalls in equipment between the two carriers when needed. This arrangement between the two airlines ended that same fall and this aircraft would remain with BOAC until the merger with British European Airways in 1974. This aircraft would start wearing the Nagus livery of British Airways that same year. The aircraft was withdrawn from service in 1979 and placed at the Imperial War Museum in Duxford in 1980 on permanent outdoor display. Our next shining example of a museum preserved VC-10 can be found at the aforementioned Royal Air Force Museum Midlands in Cosford, England. This aircraft was delivered to the Royal Air Force, otherwise known as the RAF, in 1966. Its main use, initially, was a transport, and then after 1995, as a mid-air refueling tanker. It had two drogue-style hoses applied to the ends of either wing, giving this aircraft the ability to refuel two RAF or Allied aircraft at the same time. This aircraft traveled to Berlin in a hybrid livery of RAF and USAF markings to be a part of a Gene Hackman film called Company Business, but those scenes did not make it into the final film. The aircraft was retired in 2013 and it moved to the Royal Air Force Museum Midlands in 2015 for outdoor display in its low visibility livery that it wore when its RAF service ended. From Cosford, we head north on the A-34, 
to find her next Royal Air Force VC-10. During this aircraft's career with the RAF, it was present at the opening ceremonies of the current Dallas-Fort Worth Airport, been used to transport the Queen and family to a Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting in Lusaka, Zambia, and been used in multiple flyovers or fly past involving the monarch's birthday celebration. This aircraft was broken up in 2013 with the cockpit section and the refueling probe on display at the Avro Heritage Museum in Woodford outside of Manchester, England, while a large section of the fuselage went to St. Athen at the South Wales Aviation Museum. Would you believe we have another Royal Air Force VC-10 on display in the United Kingdom? Just on the M6 and the A-50. This particular aircraft was delivered to the RAF in the summer of 1968. Within its first few years of service, it had suffered radon damage on a flight to Andrews Air Force Base that made it return to Bryce Norton Air Base and in a stunning reversal of fortune, carried the Queen on her tour of the Far East in 1972. During the Falklands War, it flew two missions carrying wounded back to the United Kingdom, including survivors of the HMS Sheffield. Converted to the tanker transport role in 1995, with the new low visibility livery being applied in 1996. In 1997, this aircraft flew the British delegation, including Prime Minister Tony Blair, to Hong Kong for the handover ceremony with mainland China. This aircraft took part in several ceremony flyovers and ended its career in 2012. The Ford fuselage has been on display at the East Midlands Aero Park since 2013, where it remains today. And now for a little twist. As you'll see, after our journey southeast on the M5, the M50, and the M42 brings us to southern Wales. This aircraft started its career in the civilian airliner market in early 1967 with the East African Airways Company based in Kenya. While flying in and around Africa, this aircraft had the opportunity to fly the Tanzanian President Nyeri from Bombay, India to Dar es Salaam, Tanzania to meet with recently exiled Ugandan President Obote. Unfortunately, East African Airways went out of business in 1977 and this aircraft was flown back to the United Kingdom for conversion to a mid-air refueling aircraft for the RAF, which is complete by 1978. This aircraft was used in refueling missions during the 1991 Gulf War and then was eventually repainted in the low visibility livery in 1995. This aircraft was retired to the Classic Air Force facility in Cornwall in 2013 as a complete aircraft. However, that museum was closed in 2015, wherein the aircraft was moved to the Cornwall Aviation Heritage Center. Bad luck continued to follow this aircraft as the Cornwall Council terminated the tenancy of this museum later on in 2015. The aircraft was left to rot in the elements of Cornwall until the aircraft was broken up with the South Wales Aviation Museum in St. Athan, Wales receiving the forward fuselage section. Upon leaving South Wales, we used the M4, the A31, and the A331 to our next destination at the Dunsfold Aerodrome. This next aircraft has the distinction of being the final VC-10 ever built. Like the aircraft before, it started service in Africa with the East African Airways Company. This plane was the first East African Airways owned aircraft to fly from Nairobi to New York City with stops at Entebbe, Uganda and Zurich, Switzerland along the way. Like our previous aircraft, this plane was repossessed by the British Aircraft Corporation after East African Airways shut down in 1977. Again, like our predecessor, it was converted into a mid-air refueling aircraft in 1978. With three crews on board, this plane circumnavigated the planet in 1986 as a means to demonstrate the newest refueling pod to the Commonwealth Nations Air Forces. This aircraft was repainted in the low visibility livery in 1995, like many other VC-10s that were around during this period. It then completed its last Falklands deployment in 2013 and was retired to the Dunsfold Aerodrome in Dunsfold, England later that month. However, personnel at the Brooklands plant were given a responsibility to maintain the aircraft as able to taxi under its own power. For fans of Top Gear, which has shown on BBC Two and BBC One, this is about when the aircraft started to appear on the background when cars were being driven on the Top Gear test track, along with a former British Airways 747-200. In 2020, 
The airframe was sold to a U.S. company called Kepler Aerospace in preparations for operations as a refueler in the United States. Thus, this aircraft was given a U.S. civilian registration. However, the aircraft is still at Dunsfold in 2024. And now for something completely different. This next aircraft can't be found in the United Kingdom, but in the United Arab Emirates. Just like the previous aircraft, this VC-10 also started its paying career with the East African Airways Company, with its taking delivery in April of 1969. Within a few months, this aircraft had been tasked with the overhaul to carry Pope Paul VI from Rome to Entebbe for the first papal visit to the African continent by a reigning pontiff. After a three-day whirlwind visit that included meetings with African nation leaders, an outdoor ceremony to consecrate a dozen new bishops, and attempts to bring peace between Nigeria and the Biafra region of separatists, the Pope was flown back to Rome on this same aircraft. This aircraft managed to survive both mechanical and political mishaps during its time with East African Airways before that airline shut down in 1977. Again, like the previous VC-10s, this aircraft was sold to the RAF and converted into a mid-air refueling aircraft by the end of 1978. In 1994, the aircraft received its low visibility livery. In 2011, this aircraft was used in a dry run refueling exercise with the new Airbus A400M. The aircraft was retired from RAF service in 2013, and in 2016, the Ford fuselage was installed at the Al Mahatta Museum near Dubai in the United Arab Emirates in Gulf Air livery. For the last preserved VC-10 on our list, we travel from the dry desert air of the Emirates to the cool moisture of the Rhineland Palatinate of the nation of Germany. As one of the earliest built of the type, this aircraft's early days were used along with some of the other early built VC-10s on route proving for this type of aircraft. While these route proving aircraft were still technically owned by Vickers, they were operated by Boat crews with Royal Air Force personnel on board all learning how to operate and maintain this new aircraft. Once the aircraft type earned its airworthiness certificate, this aircraft was officially delivered to Boeing. In 1974, with the merger that formed British Airways, this aircraft was soon retired from British service. However, it was soon taken up by the government of the United Arab Emirates as an aircraft for the Sheikh Zayed, the founder and first president of the United Arab Emirates. This aircraft was retired by the UAE government in 1981 and donated to the Flugausstellung Peter Junior Museum near Amersgal, Germany, where it sits today, still in UAE colors. Thank you for joining us on this exploration of the Vickers VC-10's history and preservation efforts. These magnificent jets continue to inspire aviation enthusiasts worldwide. If you've ever had a chance to fly on any of the 54 built VC-10s, please share your experience in the comments below. And don't forget to like and subscribe for more captivating aviation stories. Until next time, keep flying high and remember to cherish the stories that connect us all. Check out our links at the end for more preserved airliner related videos. And if you wish, you can support us on Patreon or become a member of my YouTube channel by joining the channel's Coach Class membership level. Being either a Patreon or YouTube channel member will allow you the benefits of early viewing of new videos and you will get to help choose the next video and this will allow us the flexibility to visit aircraft museums across the country. There is also a link to subscribe to our channel if you so wish.